Hello friends, this video on potentiometer part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Why is it that we should always take a high resistance in case of a voltmeter? Okay, so in order to understand this, let us first see what happens to the circuit when this R is introduced, when this resistance is introduced, what is actually happening to the circuit. So now if we see that when this resistance R was introduced, what happened? The total resistance of the voltmeter changed, right? The total resistance became equal to the resistance of the coil plus this resistance R, right? Now this R equivalent was in parallel with the circuit. So if you look at the circuit of the voltmeter, so if you look at the circuit of the voltmeter, this is somewhat like this. This is RC, this is R and this is the voltmeter. This portion is the voltmeter and this is the circuit, right? So this is the total, these together will form the equivalent resistance of the voltmeter. Now this is in parallel with the circuit right therefore the net resistance of the circuit is actually changing because of the introduction of the voltmeter now when the net resistance of the circuit changes what happens the overall current through the circuit also changes because what is resistance it is it opposes the flow of current so when the resistance is more the current will be less when the resistance is less the current will be more so that means if the resistance of a circuit changes the current flowing through the circuit will also change so in this case when this resistance R is introduced, the resistance changes. When the resistance changes, the overall current also changes. Now when the current changes, the potential difference which we have to measure between the points A and B, this also changes. That means the potential difference which the voltmeter would measure would be less accurate. Right? So the more the change in the current, the more is the change in the potential difference. Now, the more is the change in potential difference, the more inaccurate the result is. So, what should be done to reduce the inaccuracy, right? That means for better accuracy. So, for better accuracy, for better accuracy, what is done? It is said that this R equivalent should be infinite that means this resistance should be very high what will happen if the resistance is very high r equivalent is this total thing so if this r equivalent is very high that means the amount of current flowing through this circuit will be very less now if this r equivalent becomes infinite that means infinite resistance so current will be zero no current will be there that means in that case there will be no current which will be drawn to the voltmeter circuit so the voltmeter will not draw any current that means the current through this circuit will remain unchanged. When the current through this circuit remains unchanged, the potential difference through this circuit will also remain unchanged. Right? So you are understanding the logic. Whenever a voltmeter is introduced, what is happening? Voltmeter has some resistance. Because of that resistance, some current. Now when some current flows through the circuit, of which we have to measure the potential difference. So some portion of the current also flows through the voltmeter. The moment that happens, that means the voltmeter is snatching away some current from the circuit. So when it snatches away some current, so the current through the circuit changes, therefore the potential difference also changes. So the potential difference which the voltmeter measures is not the accurate one. So that is why it is always advisable to keep now this R equivalent in turn is dependent on this R. So if we increase this R as much as possible, what will happen? The amount of current flowing through the circuit of the voltmeter will be as less as possible. But if we want exact accuracy, in that case, R equivalent should be infinity. That means this R, this external resistance should be infinity. In that case, we call that voltmeter as an ideal voltmeter because that voltmeter will not snatch any current from the circuit and therefore give accurate measurements. So why should the resistance be high? To minimize error in measurement. For an ideal voltmeter, R should be infinite. So the concept is clear now. So what happens 
as i said what will happen in case of an ideal voltmeter in an ideal voltmeter r is infinity therefore r equivalent will also be infinity therefore current through the coil will be equal to zero so this this i is through the coil so this coil current will be zero therefore the current in the this circuit remains unchanged therefore potential difference also remains unchanged right now what will happen if we consider the scenario of ideal voltmeter is an ideal voltmeter possible can we construct an ideal voltmeter let us suppose theoretically right now i am not talking practically let us suppose that we have taken r as infinity so in that case r equivalent is infinity therefore current through this coil is zero that is no current is flowing through this coil right so now the potential difference will also remain unchanged right now the question is when there is no current flowing through this coil then the coil will not show any deflection right if the coil doesn't show any deflection how will the voltmeter work because the volt the principle or the basic principle based on which the voltmeter works is the deflection of the coil based on the deflection of the coil the voltmeter is able to give the measurement now if the coil never deflects in that case the voltmeter will not work so that means an ideal voltmeter is not possible that means a voltmeter is an instrument which measures potential difference but it will always measure potential difference with some error error free voltmeter or ideal voltmeter is not at all possible right so now you understand that why what was the need of having another device to measure potential difference right so now we will see the construction and working of potentiometer so let us quickly see what were the advantages of potentiometer which were not present in the voltmeter in case of potentiometer it doesn't draw any current from its for itself from the circuit therefore accurate measurement so potentiometer is constructed in such a way that it will not snatch away any current from the circuit therefore the potential difference of the circuit will remain the same and it will also be able to measure that potential difference of the circuit in voltmeter that was not possible so it is equivalent to ideal voltmeter so basically potentiometer acts as an ideal voltmeter it can measure emf of a cell so it is not only talking about the potential difference it can also measure the emf of a cell it can also compare emfs of two cells it can determine the internal resistance of a cell so these are some of the terms which i have discussed in detail before internal resistance and emf and potential difference so i i hope that you all are clear with the difference between emf and potential difference okay thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again